Welcome to Puzzle with Emilia, that's me. And hey, who else was watching the Spanish Championship live streams last weekend? Oh my God. I was obviously taking notes as usual. Um, it was so interesting also because, you know, we speak Spanish in this uh, household. So I was able to understand also uh, parts of the commentary. It was super interesting, thinking some pointers, what new can we learn? Super exciting. Uh, and also I happen to have, I have had done all the puzzles that they used there. So today we're also going to do this and see how I would have placed. Uh, this was used in the individual. Then I have done the Paris puzzle right before the Worlds. And then we have done actually the Burano puzzle, exact the same Burano puzzles. There's so many with my team uh, some time ago. So I'm also gonna reveal you those results after we do this. Anyway, I wanted to also got a little bit back. Um, I was talking about how Christine does puzzle uh, in my last video. Oh, somebody said I was criticizing her. I mean, come on, come on, like for real. Um, extremely skilled, I said, um, <laughs> I wanted to learn from her. And now I'm very interested because the same technique I was actually explaining, um, I saw on the live stream that Alejandro also does it. I actually know that Alejandro does it also kind of like trying to just smash and flip and uh, try. Um, but I never like put too much thought into it. I kind of thought that it's not something that it's common, like the common de determinator, common determinator. You know what I'm trying to say, uh, between the top speed puzzlers. But now I'm actually quite sure that that, of course there's multiple factors, but I think that's the key factor. <laughs> I'm trying to learn it. Oh my God, it's so nerve wracking. When I did the previous video, I, I, was, I was like feeling somebody make it upset because you know, I think we had always like this, oh my God, they have such a cool way of doing puzzle. I think it's still cool. I mean, they're faster, like their hands tied down and eyes closed than many of us. Um, yes, uh, but I think the reality is more boring, but I think the reality being boring is also a good thing because we can actually learn. It's not something over magnificent that they are doing. I mean, it is kind of, it's really hard to learn that the puzzle doing that way. Um, anyway, what I wanted to say, I kind of feel like I understand why people make it upset because, you know, uh, you know, Albert Einstein, never heard about the guy. Uh, and I think people think like self included that, oh my God, the guy must have had like a magnificent, magnificent special brain. And, you know, then scientists come and tell us like, yeah, we researched the brain. We had the brain and it's pretty much the average as any other person. So then you're like thinking yourself like, okay, so why do I only have small business and uh, doing some speed puzzling on my free time? If I have the same brain as that genius. Hmm. And also very interesting. I don't know where this is going, but I just saw another, because uh, I know also, of course, um, because I always talk about you can just learn anything. Anybody can learn and then people are like, okay, genes, environment. Of course, I'm well aware of the effect of those, but this is very interesting research. I have to read it from my computer screen. Uh, but it just said that they, there's new research that says Beethoven's, you know, the musician's musical genius, um, says that Beethoven's genes reveal low, listen to this, reveal low, how do you pronounce this? Low predisposition. Yeah, low predisposition for Pete synchronization, which basically means that he didn't have the gene that nowadays with the modern science, we can kind of like indicate that the person is going to be musical. So he didn't have that gene. And he was kind of like this musical genius in a spoken language, so to say. Um, and I always want to kind of like highlight the fact that you can learn and also if you're like, okay, but what if I don't have the genes or somebody else must have something they're born with. But then it's like, you don't know. This is a proof of the beat who, is, who obviously didn't know he didn't have the musical gene. We don't know what genes we have. If somebody knows all the genes they have, then good for you. Um, but I just always want to focus on things that we can actually control, that we can learn. And if there is something that makes it a little bit slower for us, then let's just try not to focus on that. I and mean, there's also psychological research uh, that what we believe actually affects our results. Not only what we believe, but also what other people believe. I think there was this research uh, where they told the teacher that these uh, students are like 
top notch and then they're giving another class with other students and they told that these are like below average. Even though those boat crews were randomized, it affects so much their teaching uh, or, or something else. I'm not sure exactly what did it affect, even if the research actually looked into that. But the end results were that the, those who were told to be below average became <laughs> below average and the other ones became like top students. So I always want to kind of like focus on the growth mindset, believing in yourself, even fake it to make it if needed. Um, but yeah, I don't know if there was a point on that. I just wanted to point out something. But anyway, let's just go because I know a lot of my subscribers don't really care about my analyzing stuff. Uh, so let's just move on on doing this puzzle. And after that, let's discuss about the Paris puzzle. I also have some video clips when I did it and also the teams and also some stuff that was said in the commentary that I found extra funny. Yeah, let's go. Somebody sent a comment some time ago that, you know, if I would have different kind of table and stuff, um, my times would be different. I didn't think it was related to the U.S. nationals that uh, maybe the time wasn't comparable. Obviously, I, you can never uh, create the same circumstances, even if you compare like two competitions. Uh, they always have different tables, different lighting, different time of the day. Um, but yeah. Anyway, I have actually done this puzzle before. Obviously, it's a populist puzzle. I think I actually bought this from Sweden. So I did this. Um, my dog is barking in the background. Perfect. Um, oh my God. Um, so I did this in Sweden. I, I went to the Swedish Nationals some time ago in March. Uh, and I found this from the store. So I did this in a hotel. The hotel didn't have a table. So I did it like, it was like this little space over the heater so i did it there i don't remember my time also I'm not sure if i even took time in the end because i also got like two calls in the middle of doing uh, but my time was definitely under an hour um, i think this is one of those puzzles that i mean there's a lot of things there's a lot of colors here a lot of nice details but at least for me like the cats and the plants or the green areas it's like I don't know how, because sometimes there's puzzles with a lot of details, like clear details. So I know that my memory is helping me when I do them for the second time. Uh, but some puzzles are like, I almost feel like I'm doing the same mistakes. For example, in this puzzle, there's actually three butterflies. And I remember, I didn't remember this when I started this, but while I was doing, I realized that, wait a second, why did I find pieces for like three butterflies? Uh, the act one butterfly is actually hidden. So you know those old Ravensburger uh, boxes? So you can see that there is this one like blue piece under the Ravensburger puzzle uh, title that it's actually on top of the image. So the third butterfly is actually under that. Um, anyway, uh, what I was actually surprised when I was watching the Spanish Nationals, like barely nobody uses a puzzle stand. I don't know. It's it's just very confusing at me at this point uh, when speed puzzling is kind of like developing it. There, I, I feel like maybe I saw one or two people using uh, a puzzle stand. Obviously, I don't use the puzzle stand either when um, when I'm doing a puzzle on this kitchen counter because it's actually more narrow than most competition tables. So I feel like better, you know, I use this classy decoration thing behind. Um, but yeah, that was interesting. And also Alfonso, this was actually on Sunday, which was the second day of the Spanish championship. Alfonso, the commentator booth says that they have received a lot of feedback, that uh, it's published puzzles. You, you obviously know my opinion about that. Ay, 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 ay. I just feel like it would be like easy. Well, I'm not saying obviously it's a little bit more complex, but so easy fix to just kind of like put in the terms and conditions when you're looking for a sponsor that needs to be an unpopular puzzle. And you know, it's also completely fine for businesses to see, okay, this doesn't make sense for us and we would like to decline. Uh, we cannot offer you. And then you would just move on to some other puzzle brand who could follow those terms and conditions. And, you know, I think there's a lot of other things that can be uh, negotiated, but I think this should be non-negotiable. Non <laughs> uh, actually also somebody pointed out 
um, also like we don't know now that we compare my time we don't know how many people but Alphonse also said that they expected a lot of like really fast times because he thought that a lot of people have done actually in all categories uh, the puzzles before so that's why they're also expecting a much much uh, better times uh, but also somebody pointed out this is not my original idea uh, makes totally sense but somebody said I think it's also unfair financially because some people have more money to just keep buying these Ravensburger 500 piece puzzles and have like a higher uh, possibility to have that puzzle and also in the competition obviously I just counted my 500 piece Ravensburgers there is way over 50 of them and also in some countries uh, they are more available Ravensburgers Ravensburgers are not actually that available in some countries uh, uh, some continents and and also they're much more expensive in some ways here the Ravensburg 500s are like 12 to 15 euros uh, but I when I was in the Middle East visiting um, the other side of the family my in-laws um, those are like so crazy expensive over there if you can and you can literally find them like in one store or something it's it's so much more expensive so I totally understand this point but anyway the puzzle was already <laughs> done and my final time was uh, 50 53 minutes and 41 uh, seconds which would have placed me uh, ninth in the Spanish championship and obviously now we are indeed comparing we don't know who had done this one or twice uh, it doesn't uh, obviously matter at this point because this is the reality of our, uh, obviously everybody can understand that it does matter whether you have done it once or twice or multiple times but in the reality of our competitions we don't have comparison we don't you know we don't go in a competition to ask have you done this before and then we do like uh, different rankings based on uh, have you done it before everybody's on the same uh, placement whether you have done it before or not it doesn't affect your placement or rankings it's not like considered um, if you understand what I'm trying to say so I think at this point it's also kind of like we just have to compare it as it is um, so yeah I would have been nine I think that's a pretty consistent um, with the other results I mean I was nine in the Finnish champs um, I don't remember anymore what happened in Sweden. I, I think in Sweden, and if we just compare the US nationals, obviously I wasn't there, but the one I was doing home, I usually do better on my classification rounds than in the final. Uh, but I think I'm pretty consistent with kind of like plus minus on the top 10. And yeah, I thought I would have done this under 50 easily, but nah, I don't know. I'm sometimes having like, is this a good time? Am I trying to get like better? Do I have too high expectations? Am I actually slowing down or stopping my progress? Or should I take like one week off from speed puzzling? Maybe I'm going to do that. But anyway, uh, lovely puzzle. I really like this puzzle. And yeah, let's move on and talk about a little bit about the pairs and teams as well. So then in the pairs, there was the koalas in three. Koalas in three. Why that sounds so odd? Anyway, the koala puzzle was with pairs. I've done it before, actually. It was one of the puzzles I practiced right before the Worlds uh, when we were traveling Middle East. It's actually the only one Ravensburger I found in there after like one week of trying to search for puzzles. Uh, funny thing is that it, it was actually, I bought a lot of travel puzzles over there and then I found this one Ravensburger and I left the Ravensburger puzzle for last because I was like okay the image doesn't look that bad like it's a Ravensburger it must be better than the trefles uh the trefle puzzles I bought that's actually why I recommend a lot of trefle puzzles for people because they generally at least to me they look harder than they are I think a lot of other brands they look easier than they are uh, so a lot of I did a lot of seniors and uh, with the travel puzzles I had like almost like I did have almost everything like in one hour which is like a crazy time back back then um, for me and then I remember I did this Ravensburger koala puzzle and <laughs> I did it for an hour and 51 minutes oh my god it was so long so when I saw that the pairs had it uh, first of all I was like okay probably a lot of people have done it so that of course affects um, but it's still like a hard puzzle I think it's somehow though that you can there is easily uh, splittable areas and 
Yeah, but it's one of the puzzles I think it gets slower and slower. It was funny to me when I think it was Alfonso who said, I think six, 60 minutes had passed in the live stream, like when they started the competition. And Alfonso, I think he was saying something or the commentators were like guessing their times. I think he said like 27 minutes will be uh, the winning time. And I was looking at, I think it was um, of uh, Alejandro and uh, his pair had finished like maybe one fourth, one, one third. And I'm like, it's been 16 minutes and you're saying they're gonna finish it like in 10 minutes, like that's not gonna happen. But of course they did finish in 33, so it wasn't that much off. But yeah, very interesting puzzle. I remember it was, <laughs> it was so terrible. That's why I don't have it here because I left it there. I was like, I'm not carrying this in my suitcase. There's much better puzzles. Uh, but yeah, then also the teams. Uh, so there was the Burano puzzle, and I think Burano is actually, uh, as a location, it's a kind of like popular location for puzzle images. So we had done this puzzle uh, very early on when we started with my team in February, because I was like, you know what, at least you must have done at least one Burano, uh, because it's so popular and it's so similar, even if it's from different angles. My neighbor is passing by. Uh, so that's why I chose it for us. So at least we have then done one Burano puzzle. So if there is another one in the competition, then we at least have a little bit familiarity with it. Um, our time was actually 50, 51, 51 minutes and 18 seconds, I think. And I think that would have actually placed us quite well um, in the Spanish championship. Uh, I did a mistake. I only took time... Um, so it doesn't show, like it shows the time for the two puzzles. The other puzzle we haven't done, uh, looks also wonderful, would love to do that. Uh, but the results doesn't show specifically what was the time for each puzzle. I remember there was like 38-ish was Alejandro's team. Then the next teams, I think were like 46 and 48, around that. Some of them did the other puzzle first. But anyway, I think that we would have placed maybe in top five, um, hard to say. Uh, a lot of the teams I noticed that even though I would say I was expecting the other puzzle to take much longer, but there are surprisingly a lot of even the top 10 teams did the Burano a little bit longer than the other puzzle, uh, but more generally around the same time. So that was the puzzles were really equally same difficulty level, I guess. Um, so yeah, I think we would have been in top five, uh, probably, yeah, yeah. But I think these are like, even if I would have been like in top 10 with individual top 10 and five, because I think Spain is like the pioneer of speed puzzling and these uh, puzzle competitions. So I'm also like kind of like really happy, happy for that. I think, for example, in the individual, I think there was like over 300 participants uh, and, you know, it was only one round, but that's like a crazy amount of people and then be like top 10 is like really good. Um, honestly, even like being on top 100, I think it's like extremely good. Uh, but yeah, did I have something else? I don't know. I feel like I had like a <laughs> I always thought like, okay, now I'm gonna do, you know, intro for this video that it's going to be like one minute and then I already move on to the, doing the puzzle because I know, uh, I think majority uh, of my viewers actually are more <laughs> interested in the puzzle making part uh, than me talking about Einstein and brains and uh, psychological research, but whatever. Um, but yeah, it's always so nice to watch these live streams. I'm just wishing that next year, uh, more competition will have live stream, um, even though it's just the clips from there and there. And at least for me, analyzing wise, not the best because it's such, it sometimes gives such a misconception when you just see clips from there and there, but also sometimes it captures interesting moments. Um, yeah, but it's, uh, it's, it's fun. I mean, I love to watch sports, especially speed puzzling. So. Yeah, so much fun. But yeah, I don't think there is an other. Is there other big competition still? Uh, is there any other championships coming before the Worlds? I don't think so. If there is, please comment. 
And if you know they have live streams, even more interested. There's also the Spanish championship came out of like nowhere. I don't even know where did I catch that they have this live stream. Um, but I'm so happy I did. But anyway, Willy is getting nervous here because our neighbor is moving and is walking <laughs> back and forth next to a window. So uh, thank you again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Will you say bye bye, Willy? Really?